I just want you guys to know, this whole thing is only going to get worse. No matter how optimistic you are, no matter how bad you want things to be better, none of it means anything without action. A lot of us know that we're behind financially. A lot of us know that prices continue to go up even though your pay isn't going up. It's getting harder and harder to live on your own and pay your bills while still living a life you enjoy living, all because of things that are out of our control. But I don't think we're really doing anything about it. So this video is gonna give you what you need to do something about it because you might not know what to do to get ahead of this and it's not your fault. I feel like I learned a lot of what I'm about to share with you in this video way too late. But I realized sometimes you're gonna learn things later than you should. And you can either ponder on that or you can make the most out of what you learned. That's what I did. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms. Let's get into this video. So I'm going to jump straight into this video by telling you the first ugly truth of personal finance is the simple fact that it is 100% on you and no one else. As obvious as this sounds, you'd be surprised at how easy it can be to rationalize being okay with your financial situation despite barely being able to pay for your normal living expenses every month or feeling guilty for buying a Starbucks coffee. There's more to life than that. Here's the thing, despite knowing you feel like you can never hold on to money, nine times out of 10 what happens is we act on our wants, favoring the short-term comfort over the long-term stability. And that's making financial decisions that drain your bank account, all because you want the comfort. You might have even put something on your credit card that you knew for a fact you couldn't afford right then. I know I have, so I can relate. You tell yourself you'll pay off your credit card the next time you get paid. But how often does that happen? Instead, it's more like three to six months down the line you finally pay it off. Or maybe you did what I got into the bad habit of doing and you started pulling money from your savings account and putting it into your checking account. I didn't really find myself doing this for things I needed immediately. There were no emergencies or unexpected expenses or anything like that. It was mainly for impulse buying, just to be honest. To give you a few examples, it was stuff like shoes I really wanted, cologne I really wanted, or honestly, food I really wanted and I just went overboard. I'm just gonna be real with you. I have spent ungodly amounts of money on food like between $400 and $500 a month. And I'm not even talking about groceries, I'm talking about eating out. And that was on top of groceries. So the point I'm bringing home is this. The price of convenience, comfort, or just wanting to look good and smell good is much bigger than you realize. There's nothing wrong with wanting these things, but the moment you get impulsive about it, that's when you lose because you're being impatient. And at that point, you're allowing your emotions to take control over what you do with your money. Instead of making a plan to figure out when it makes financial sense to buy what you want, you let your desires get the best of you. And the ironic thing about that is when you do that, the short term may feel good for now. You might feel amazing in your brand new car with the nice interior, smelling good, super shiny, with all the bells and whistles on it. But in the long run, it can hurt you, especially when that car payment catches up to you. On top of your living expenses, on top of your impulsive buys, and using your credit card to buy things that you can't afford right now, and moving money from your savings account to your checking account. Bro, all that adds up. It might not hurt you right now, but it'll definitely hurt you later. And when it hits, it won't be as easy as putting a band-aid on it, because it'll be something like a bullet wound when you realize that all the prices around you keep steadily going up. Despite how much you wish things were different, despite how much you wish you had more money. Because in your mind, if you had more money, you'd be able to pay for your wants and needs without having any issues. That's where the complaints about inflation come in. Have you ever found yourself or someone else saying, man, prices are too high, man, this is too much. Man, milk is super expensive, so is gas. I know for a fact, if you're renting an apartment right now, I know you complain about that rent going up every year. That's the smallest of your problems though, because the biggest complaint that you probably have is the fact that no one ever taught you how to manage your money. No one ever taught you about the cost of living or how which area you decide to live in affects how much you have to pay. No one ever told you about the smart ways to make money work for you. So you feel like you were set up for failure. You might even feel like a helpless victim when it comes to this. Especially as you try to improve your situation, but you realize the money you're working with is moving slow. That's why this video is called The Ugly Truth About Personal Finance, because one thing about it is, the world doesn't care about your victim's mentality, bro. 
I promise you, the world isn't going to stop moving just because you're going through hard times right now or you're trying to figure out this personal finance thing. No one cares that you've never been taught or that you're living paycheck to paycheck. So it's best not to have a victim's mentality. There is no why me, woe is me, none of that mess. Which brings me to my next point. Personal finance advice won't always apply to you. That's why it's important for you to figure out how your money flows every single month. And all you literally have to do is just look at it. And from there, you make a budget based off of that information. Multi-billion dollar companies do this on a regular basis. So what would make you think that you shouldn't have to do it? You know what I mean? And with that said, there's different types of budgets. There's a zero-based budget. There's budgets based off of percentages like the 50-30-20 rule. You may have been told that you don't need no budget, that budgeting is only for broke people. While others are extremely anal about it and they're on you about making a budget. Who do you listen to? You listen to your pockets, bro, because some advice just simply won't apply to you right now. If you know that basing your budget off of percentages isn't feasible for you, then don't even waste your time basing your budget off of that. Go with something else. If you know you're struggling to save your first $1,000, but you're listening to somebody telling you what to invest in to double your money, you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose money trying to make money. If you know you have a solid savings account and you have like a year's worth of expenses stowed away in your bank account, but you're listening to somebody telling you to penny pinch, you're going to be miserable. There's different steps when it comes to personal finance and listening to someone else's advice blindly without first assessing your situation is a big mistake. That's why this is getting harder. And I'm gonna take it a step further than getting out of debt, saving money, and all that good stuff. A big place where money opportunities fall through the cracks is not understanding the value of investing. The trap I used to fall into a lot was being intimidated by the price of investing, even though I was in the place where I could actually spend a good amount of money on investing. And I could do it without hurting my pockets at all. But the price was so intimidating that I just didn't go through with it. But I was quick to buy something for leisure though, TVs, games, fast food, and when you add all of that stuff up, it actually costs it more than it would have costed to invest. Only those didn't pay me anything. That's what happens when you have the mindset of a consumer. That mindset is, well, you know, it's, it's too risky for me to invest. I might lose my money. Then proceeds to like buy something that depreciates. And it's for reasons like, well, I deserve this. I want to treat myself to something nice. That's legit what I used to do. And I think it's partially because I was just uncomfortable because I had never invested before. And I was also uneducated when it came to investing. So I'm gonna give you some free insight on one of the most valuable lessons I've ever learned about investing and I'll back it up with a story. So in this case, I have two examples. The first one brings me back to a time when I lacked competence in something I wanted to be really good at. And that was making YouTube videos. So for about a year and a half, I was just aimlessly throwing a bunch of videos together, not really targeting any specific audience. And I was just putting stuff out there just, just to do it. My videos didn't really have any structure and I was getting about five views per video. So long story short, I just wanted to build an audience of 1,000 people. I plateaued around 600. I also wanted to be monetized. And at the time, my YouTube channel had made nothing and it wasn't improving either. So instead of me trying to figure this whole thing out completely on my own, I hired a coach. I ended up paying like $1,200 and that was intimidating for me because even though I had the money for it, I couldn't help but think, what if this doesn't work out? But then I realized it's the coach's job to show me the ropes and it's up to me to execute. And since I had so much faith in myself, I went ahead and went through with it. And since then, this channel has generated a decent amount of money, even for being a small channel. Because shortly after being coached by a professional, my channel got monetized. My channel finally hit a growth spurt, and I learned more in a few weeks with her than I did an entire year and a half trying to figure it out myself. So now the question is, what if I was too afraid to pay the $1,200? The thing about investing is, it's going to cost. That's why it's important that you're in a financial place where you can actually afford to invest without it hurting any of your other financial obligations. Can't stress that enough, but always know investing is going to cost because the value behind it is, it has the power to pay you perpetually into the future. And that's to the point of paying for itself, in addition to paying you for several years into the future, maybe even the rest of your life. So before I get into the second example, I'm going to be straight up with you. Coaching is the best investment I've ever made. Ever since I made that investment, it has made me more money than the stock market has every single month. 
and the earnings I'm getting now as a result of that coaching has the potential to grow exponentially throughout the years. It even inspired me to launch my own coaching program, which is coming very soon. Speaking of the stock market, there's a lot of hype around stock market crashes and losing money in the stock market. I used to buy into this hype and I missed out on a lot of money because of it and I'm not happy about it. So I'm going to leave you with this. Educate yourself on investing in general before you decide you're too skeptical to even give it a chance. The numbers are going to fluctuate as they always do, but understanding the ups and downs and what they mean for you could be the difference between you benefiting from something as passive as investing in stocks and not benefiting at all. Choosing wisely and investing consistently can grow your money much faster than just throwing a bunch of it into a savings account. That's the value of investing. Money you spend now that can benefit you for the rest of your life. This is the truth about personal finance that I highly encourage you to think about as you go further in your financial journey. This isn't a common way of thinking, but this is exactly how you do something about the challenges that you will face. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with a friend. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.